as you see, we have the skeleton, skeleton crew for praise band, but uh, we will still praise God in music. And if you could turn to number 35, Shout to the North, we will sing verses 1 and 2. Chuck Goad is absent uh, this Sunday because Marilyn Goad has tested positive now for COVID. Uh, you know, we've said before that Chuck tested positive and he was cleared to go back to work uh, Monday. And I think Marilyn is negative, but she tested positive this week. So that's why uh, Chuck is not here this morning. But we're glad that all of you are here for worship today. Uh, just a, a couple of announcements on the back of your bulletin uh, today. Just a reminder that we are having a congregational meeting uh, following worship today to elect new church officers and uh, seeing how our numbers are slim today. We need all of you to stay if you can. I think our quorum number is about 14, so I'm pretty sure we're okay, but um, we would like for you to stay for that. And you can see at the bottom of the page uh, those who have been nominated for session and for deacons and uh, we will accept any nominations from the floor. Uh, session does meet at five o'clock um, uh, tomorrow for those that will be elected. Um, you actually don't start you know, your term until February, so you don't have to worry about that for a while, but uh, session meets at five, and then on Tuesday of this week, we have our Presbyterian meeting, and this will be our second time to have a, a Presbyterian meeting via Zoom, and so, um, I, I think you do have to register your computer ahead of time in order to participate in that meeting. So if any of you might want to sit in on a Presbytery meeting via Zoom, uh, please let me know or Alberta know uh, first thing tomorrow morning and we can get you on the list. And Sarah has an announcement she wants to make about an upcoming uh, community event. Um, the poster is out there on the board, but I am accompanying the vocal professor at the college, Alexis Louder. She will be uh, having her faculty recital. It's next Sunday, uh, which is November 15th at 3 o'clock at, at the Inch Theater. It's really wonderful music, and we hope to see you there. Anybody else have announcements you need to make today? Lyle? Why do I have an orange tie on? Uh, I don't know, Lyle. Yeah, I'll have to uh, think about that for a minute. I, I, sometimes I say prayers that the best team does not win. The lucky team wins, and that happened to be my team yesterday. So I'm um, happy for that. 
Um, for um, our next group of praise songs, uh, the first one is for preparing our hearts for worship. And so we'll, all of these come out of the hymnal. Uh, we'll remain seated. For the first one, Sanctuary, it's number 701 in your hymnal. And then we'll stand for the next two. Uh, the first one, Gather Us In, we'll sing just the first two verses of that one. It's number 401 in the hymnal. And then Change My Heart, O God, number 695. So let us prepare. So we approach God seeking forgiveness. So let us pray. We'll pray together and then we'll have a time for silent prayers of confession. Let us pray. Sin means cutting ourselves off from you and being unprepared to respond to your presence. Surely we have sinned. Our lamps are not trimmed, our lives are not made ready for your trumpet call. We have not listened well or encouraged the faith. The distraction of many things has kept us from meditation and prayer. We are witnesses against ourselves, for we have vowed our loyalty 
and then have gone our own way. Merciful God, we seek your forgiveness. And let us take this time to confess the sins of our own heart. We believe that God frees us from all that imprisons us. It is God's will that we should live in harmony with one another, that we learn to love all of God's children, and God extends to us a full pardon. We praise God for that forgiveness and a second chance. Let us stand and sing glory to God. First scripture reading for today from the Old Testament, Psalm 78, verses 1 through 7. Hear, O my people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter hidden things, things from of old, what we have heard and known, what our fathers and mothers have told us. We will not hide them from our children. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders he has done. He decreed statutes for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our forefathers to teach their children so the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born. And they in turn would tell their children. Then they would put their trust in and would not forget his deeds, but would keep. Old Testament reading for today, we probably need to uh, set the scene for this one a little bit. Um, it's out of, of Joshua 24. And at this point in the story of the Old Testament, the Israelites have been uh, freed from their slavery in Egypt. They have wandered in the wilderness, and now they have settled in the promised land. So this reading from Joshua, all the people are gathered before Joshua to renew their covenant with God, to begin this new phase in their life as a community of faith. Uh, the, the lectionary text is chapter 24, verses 1 through 3, and then it skips kind of a section that talks about how God has... Uh, released the people from slavery and settled in the promised land. And then it picks up again in verse 14 where the covenant renewal ceremony takes place. So here's God's word for us. Then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel and presented themselves before God. He said to all the people, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago, your forefathers, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the river and worshipped other gods. Your father Abraham from the land beyond the river and led him throughout Canaan and gave him many descendants. Now, and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods of your forefathers, that your forefathers worshipped beyond the river and in Egypt, and to serve the Lord. 
But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose to yourselves this day who will serve, whether the gods your forefathers served beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our fathers up out of Egypt from the land of slavery and performed these great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites, who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. God said to the people, You are not able to serve the Lord. He is a God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve the foreign gods, he will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end of you after he has been so good to you. But the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said, You are witness yourselves that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, we are witnesses, they replied. Now then, said Joshua, throw away the foreign gods that are among you, and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, We will serve the Lord our God and obey him. On that day, Joshua made a covenant for the people, and there at Shechem, them decrees and laws. May God bless to our understanding these readings from God's holy word. And let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. They are some of the most famous words in the Old Testament. Choose this day whom you will serve. And the answer, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You see those words on pillows, on those little signs that people put up in houses. You see them on keychains. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Those words are seen a lot. And the, the three verses of that, Joshua, are just this unmitigating uh, you know, show of words reiterating time and time again, yes, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. You know, it's all very inspirational, all very exciting. They are ready to go now that they are settled in the promised land to renew the and get started living the life of faith. Joshua, however, throws a bucket of cold water on He says, you are not able serve the Lord. You are not able. Here he is, the leader of the people. And he's saying, not able. You might have expected him to say something along the lines of, you know, let's do this. We're all in this together. Dreams. There's nothing we can't accomplish together. But no. He says, you're not able. Is that true? For the people then, is it, is it true for us today as the people of God that we are not able to serve God in the way which God calls us to serve? Well, the first thing for us to admit is we're not used to hearing the kind of language that's being used in Joshua. 
this very stark white. It's either all one thing or it's all the other thing kind of language when it comes to our faith. You know, either you are completely serving God or you are not serving God at all. It's very stark language in Joshua. We are used to language about faith that gives us a little bit more room to maneuver. You know, that gives us a, an out here and there. There was one pastor who received a letter from one of the members of his congregation that went like this. Thank you for your recent letter. And yes, we haven't been in church for several months now, so maybe we should explain. In the summer, we go to the lake every weekend. Our children are young, and it is so important for them to learn how to water ski. And we like to get away too, Jack and me, because there's so much going on in our lives, and we, we just And then when summer soccer season begins, yeah, games every weekend, mostly out of town, but the ones that are in town are on Sundays, so you can why we just can't make it to church. We will be back at church. Don't give up on us. There's a brief period of time. Soccer season is finished, and before back starts, and it's too cold to go to the lake, that's a great time for us to go to church. Don't be surprised to see us one of these days, because we just love our church. When it comes to matters of faith, we always feel like we have more time. Whether it's for our children, or whether it's for ourselves, we always feel like we can put that off until tomorrow. None of this choose this day whom you will serve kind of No, you know, we want to be on God's side for sure. But tomorrow week, next year. That works out better for me, God, than today. Choose this day. Now, there is nothing wrong with most of our leisure time activities. But they can too easily become false gods. We invest too much of ourselves in them. And it can lead us down an unfulfilling path. A lot of pleasant distraction, but nothing else. I had a professor in college, one of my favorites, who had a slogan. You can take this class seriously, or you can take it again. I love that. He set the bar high what he expected of his students. He really thought that we should invest a lot of time in learning the material for his class if we wanted to do well in that class. And he was right. By setting that bar high and pushing us, we probably all accomplished far more in that class than we ever thought we could have without that little extra. Choose this day sets the bar high. It says, you know, not tomorrow, not next week. Choose this day. And when it gets to be Monday, choose this day again. And when it gets to be Tuesday, choose this day Joshua also said this about God. God is a holy God. Okay, that's to be expected. He also 
said God is a jealous God. Now I wonder if we were a list of the attributes of God, how many of us would have the word jealous on our list? I'm guessing God is a jealous God. God wants to be in first place in our lives. God wants us to love God with all of our and all all of our minds and all of our strength. How do we do that? We do that in each little small decision that we make. How do you spend your money? How is God in first place in that decision? How do you respond to people who have hurt you? How is God in first place in that decision? How do you best serve others in the world? How is God in first place in that decision? So, imagine you have heard God's call to put God first in your life, and you are enthused about all of the possibilities, imagine you have reached yourself to God with the words, here I am, Lord, send me in my house, we will serve the Lord. And then some Joshua comes along and says, you know what, I don't think, I don't think you are up to the job. What do you do with that? Do you just say, don't rain on my parade? Which is, in effect, what the Israelites did. When Joshua said, you can't do it, they answered back, oh, yes, we can. Watch us. And Joshua said, okay, I'm watching. God's watching. You are witnesses against yourselves. Joshua was right. We're not able to keep God in first place. And it costs. <laughs> so is the answer just to, to throw in throw in the towel? And say, well, we're not able, and let's not even try if we're not able. Well, the answer is that old biblical word that we know so well, repent, to change direction, to change focus when we recognize that we are off course. It's not easy. You know, I know a lot of people that I can recognize when they are off course, only they don't recognize. And if I'm fair, there's probably people who see me. <laughs> and I don't seem to be able to, to recognize it. It's hard to know when you are straying. That's why faith is such a community event, that we hold each other accountable. We remind ourselves of the stories. We remind ourselves of how Jesus calls us disciples. And how we need that reminder on at least a week, if not more often. Once, after Jesus gave a, a teaching that was particularly difficult to understand, a number of the people following after him just scratched their heads and said, you know, this, this is too much for us. And they decided to stop following Jesus and go their own way. So Jesus went to his followers and said, well, what about you? Do you want to leave as well? Peter 
answered, Lord, to whom can we go? Words of eternal life. Peter, the one who stumbled more frequently than anybody and knew that he had not followed God to the best of his ability, still said, what other option? It is in you that we find fulfillment. It is in you that we find wholeness, forgiveness, restoration, a new start. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is stinking sand. On the rock of God's grace, we look for that foothold, knowing that God will help pull us back on track if we seek God, if in first place. Choose this day whom you will serve. You probably made that choice before. Maybe it's time to make it again. Okay, Pam Falone, who has been on our prayer card, uh, did pass away, and then I um, also understand, um, I, I kind of said we're sending out this week, uh, there are some sympathy cards to the family of Joe Warnock and the family mm -hmm. of uh, Sam King, and then uh, also a card for uh, Helena Minnings' uh, sister, Gloria, who has been on our prayer card and got an update this morning that her sister very close to death as well. So, um, yeah, she did die. So, uh, our thoughts and prayers are with uh, their family as well. Um, any any other updates? Oh, let me let me finish real quick with um, the other uh, card. Is a congratulations card to Deidre Rose, who was recently recognized by the Pittsburgh Chamber of Commerce as a. So, uh, Deidre is a friend of ours, and congratulations to Dietra. Glad to hear that news. Um, any other updates on our offer thanksgiving for your goodness. You have not left your people. When our tables are full, it is due to your grace. We are filled with the life you breathe in. Our limbs move with purpose because of the strength you give. We give you thanks for Christ Jesus who fulfills all of In him we have confidence that you accept who we are. It is he who redeems us in spite of our rebellion and offers salvation when we stray from your will. He tempers your judgment with his intercession 
and stays your anger as he acts on our behalf. We can approach you with assurance that in Christ you will hear us and take heart that we accept in your favor. We give thanks for our loved ones who are at rest now with you. Their faith in Christ helped transform our lives. We thank you as well for the prophets and saints of all ages. Their journeys taken in obedience have inspired us to walk with you. We thank you for all those who have shown us how to seek justice and kindness. By their example, our lives have perspective. And because of their commitment, we too have had faith. As we continue our own quest to be obedient, Help us to remember your presence throughout history. We especially pray this morning for uh, Joe, Sam, and Gloria. We pray for Harry, Debbie, Jesse, Marilyn, Joan, Dennis, Connie, Cindy. Bev, I will pray for the family of Pam, pray for Mary Ann, Joan, and Ellis, and for John, and for the family we especially keep in our prayers today, Mark and Kim. All of these things we pray. who sow bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let us take this offering time to think of how we may sow seeds for God in our own lives. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing is the first, which is number 175, followed by the gift of love, number 693.